Hey, welcome to the Brink of Sanity episode 121. Got John from Random Ass Radio here. What's going on? Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for coming back on the show. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. I've been without, uh, been without internet for a while, man. Why would you do something like that? Well, uh, do you want to hear the actual story or is that a polite question? Uh, yeah, let's hear the story. Um, well, for, for anyone who doesn't know, um, uh, a while back, um, the about 17 years ago, um, there was a bank that lent me money for my house. Mm-hmm. And what they figured was that month by month, uh, over over time, um, <laughs> I would pay them a, a set amount a- until the, the amount of the loan was paid off, and mm-hmm. then I would own the house. Uh, and I did for, for quite a while, but then it got to the point where I couldn't. And uh, when I couldn't, um, they started to make noise like, hey, uh, we're going to come take your house. So uh, I panicked and because uh, I had a bunch of other people who fucking <laughs> lent me money <laughs> 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 and uh, wanted it too, and I wasn't paying it. Mental note, don't so, lend John money. Yeah, don't, don't send me. And this is brilliant. Wells Fargo is fucking brilliant. They sent me a check in the mail. All right, a real check, not those, this check could be yours or you've been approved for so much. They sent me a check for $7,500. And all it said was, if you sign the back of this, you agree to these terms, and this check is valid. Put it in your bank. The money will be in there tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like, fuck yeah. Uh, what Boom. were the terms? Um, the terms were, like with the house, <laughs> you pay us back a certain amount every month oh. until it's paid off. Mm-hmm. Dummies. So, with like 50% it, interest? No, actually, no. No, it was. I think it was like less than 10. Less oh. than 10%. Well, that's better but than having a credit card. It, they sent it two weeks before Christmas. Well, Merry Christmas. Oh, they're fucking brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Citibank did the same thing. They're like, hey, you're approved for so much for a loan. And I'm like, am I? Oh, where do I sign? <laughs> Don't mind if I do. <laughs> exactly. Oh, cool. You, you expect? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll pay you back. And then they actually really do start sending you statements like they want you to send you that, that money back in every month. Mm-hmm. So long story short, five or six more people giving me offers like that and credit cards and everything else later, I'm in a fucking hole. And I want to I want to say before anybody starts getting all up in arms, uh, if you haven't noticed the sarcasm in my voice, I'm not blaming any of these people for lending me money. They're stupid for lending me money because I didn't fucking pay it back. Um, I got in a hole and I started borrowing, and that's not the way to get out of a hole. If you're in a hole because you owe money, don't keep borrowing. So anybody who's crying because their house got took away, you're a dumb fuck for trying to do like I did. Uh, but what I did was I filed Chapter 13 bankruptcy. The difference between that and any of the other numbers is Chapter 13 allows you to keep your house. Okay. But the thing that is, <laughs> they still expect you to keep paying for your house every month. Well, I mean, that, you filed the paperwork. Isn't that like, all right. Yeah, I figured. End I of transaction. A yeah, it's like, hey, okay, uh, here's you get one get out of house payments forever free card. <laughs> yeah. You unused it, and here's your house. No, they expect you to keep paying for that shit and pay all your other debt back. Well, then what's the point of my... filing this stuff? It's just the I don't, don't yeah, take my house me, form? Cost me fucking $300 more that I still owe the lawyer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but what I did was I panicked, and I'm like, I got to keep my house. I got to keep my house. Can't lose my house. My house was a fucking hole. It was just a piece of fucking shit. <laughs> uh, no, my wife and I, we, we bought it when we were first married. And it was the first fucking house we looked at. We kind of got pressured into it by our, our uh, parents and everything. Like, this is a great place. Fucking buy it. So you don't live with us. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we bought it. And uh, it just, it w- but the, the thing is, is there were so many things. We were so young and there were so many things wrong with the house. That over 17 years' time, it just nickeled and dimed me into the fucking hole I was in. Mm -hmm. Um, Just bad decisions all around. So, uh, like I said, I filed Chapter 13. I thought I was going to keep the house. Filed Chapter 13. Didn't make a fucking single payment on it. Got something from them going, "Uh, yeah, we're we're still going to take the house. And again, I panicked. And uh, I was at work. And something just clicked in my head. And I was like, you know what? I've got my computer. 
I've got a big fucking, I've got a Sony Bravia 52-inch big screen high-def TV Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. an Xbox 360 plus kids and a lot of nice furniture and shit. I'll just go fucking put that in some other house. So that's what I did, and I live way out in the country. And uh, it took me a month uh, during my move to get internet out here. That was the only drawback. Uh, It took forever to find working internet because... Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with HughesNet or Wild Blue or some of the satellite services. No, I never heard of that stuff. Yeah, they. Uh, well, it's a satellite. It's uh, like DirecTV or Dish Network. Mm-hmm. Familiar? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's yeah, it's the same deal, um, except it's for internet. And uh, what sucks is if you try and use it for something like podcasting, it's impossible. I, I even told HughesNet, I'm like, I run a podcast. I need to be able to live stream audio, and I need to be able to use Skype and video. And he's like, yeah, we, we tell folks don't use Skype with us uh, because in your standard broadband high-speed connections, there's usually between anywhere from a 10 to a 30. Uh, uh, Megabyte per second? Thing no, 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 no. Uh, it's it's the, the, the millisecond. There's a 10 to 30 millisecond delay. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, but with HughesNet and, like and four stuff minutes. like that, it's 1,000 milliseconds. Oh, my God. So, yeah. <laughs> That would uh, be but like I, I ended up finally podcast. finding something, and uh, now we're back. So that all I've got to say is, uh, yeah, um, walk away from your house. You can find internet anywhere. <laughs> you got cool shit. When you first said, uh, you know, I got a computer, I, I thought you were going to tell me your plan was to just do your podcast and make enough money to pay for the house. And I was like, oh. well, if you can do that, then you need to give me some pointers. No, actually, Jason, what I would like to do now, mm-hmm. um, as you were crying about before the show, mm-hmm. I would love uh, to uh, use the internet in my show to make enough money to quit my fucking job and quit it in style, like with both fingers flying and screaming, fuck you, and just burn that bridge. Just nuke the bridge. You know what I mean? I would like, settle but- to uh, not lose $60 a month on my show. I'd, <laughs> I'd just be fine with that. <laughs> Baby steps, you know. I, I know. I, <laughs> exactly. Uh, my my dream is to almost kind of break even. Yeah. <laughs> Step one, break even. Step two, pay for a house. But uh, like yeah. it was obviously I had to pay for my own hosting and shit. Hosting, uh, websites. Uh, yeah. You know, equipment. So many, so many equipment I was donated to me, so I haven't really. The only thing I ever bought was the uh, laptop. And uh, I bought that with the money I borrowed and never paid back to the fucking company, so. <laughs> and no free time ever again. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I love it. I missed it. I, yeah, the first week, I really missed it. I'm like, I felt fucking I'm like, fuck, I need to do a show. I need to do a show. I need to do a show because I'd just been going for over a year, like right at it. Mm-hmm. Uh, then after a couple weeks, what I was doing was I was working all week. And then I would come home on the weekends, and we would all pack up. And I moved, like, you know, 50, 60 miles away mm-hmm. from where I was living. And we would pack up and come to this empty house out in the middle of fucking nowhere. And we were painting it and fixing it up and shit, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I kind of got into, like, I guess an Amish vibe or something for a couple weeks there. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I don't need to do the show. Maybe maybe it's, maybe it's I made a mistake. Maybe, But, yeah, uh, after, you know a few fucking drinks and everything i'm like boy i should be doing a show so so we were almost at the end of random ass radio that would have been a sad day in podcasting history i'd have been sad yeah so the thing is you can't paint a house the day after you've been drinking for six straight hours which is what you do on your show yes uh because i don't think you've had a show under four hours like ever um no they 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 average around two and a half three anymore i guess i guess uh yeah, the one we did Saturday um, would have stopped at about three, but uh, my uh, my wife, um, of all people, ended up missing the show as much as I did and was yelling, "No, no, you got to stay on. You got to do some more." And I'm like, "What? Who the fuck are you?" <laughs> wow. She's been making me proud lately. She actually uh, she actually stayed up last night drinking after I went to bed uh, and drank enough that she has been sick all day. Right on. Yeah, Welcome yeah. to the club. Uh, puking. <laughs> puking. Puking, but sending me messages. I love this new toilet. I love this new clean toilet we have. It is such a pleasure to puke in this. <laughs> I love this X clean toilet. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> because uh, yeah, I'm telling you, our house. Oh, oh, oh. Um, 
that's the funniest thing. It, it, it's supposed to, it, they, you know, it's a shit. If you, if you get foreclosed upon, they, they send you something, you know, and the, the, the county you live in, the treasurer sends you, hey, uh, <laughs> there will be a sheriff's order of sale on this property uh, at such and such a date at such and such a time. Uh, Intel said property is sold. And uh, once they do that, that's when they come back and they fucking nail the thing to your door. You've got 30 days to get the fuck out. Well, all of this shit happened with uh, them putting the freeze on foreclosures and shit. Mm -hmm. And I thought September 25th, they're auctioning off my house. Now, the piece of shit didn't sell because you buy them sight unseen, too. You can't go to the house and go through it and everything. Um, so either, you know, enough people drove by and they're like, mm, it looks okay outside, but I have this certain sense of seediness coming off of it. <laughs> or it was the freeze on foreclosures because two weeks after it was supposed to have sold, I get something from my mortgage company saying, are you in a bind? Do you need help? Uh, talk to us. Give us a call. We can work something out with, uh, with your mortgage. And I'm like, I'm already moved into a, another fucking house. <laughs> you can have a piece of shit. It was a steel frame house. It was the worst house ever. You couldn't hang anything on the walls unless you had like a fucking impact drill and shit. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> steel girder house. They built them. It was trap. Like it was the entire place was built. The entire town in 1946. Uh, steel frame homes on fucking concrete slabs with the in floor heat and all that shit. And they all cookie cutter fucking homes, to- total fucking you know post World War II industrialized fucking town and shit. And uh, it was nice living there when we did with the kids because um, it wasn't too ethnic. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you got you got tired of it after a while. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it worked out for the best anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's good to be. <laughs> it's good to good to at least be able to get on the internet. Even out here, I'm looking out my window and I see nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing but fl- I can see 15 miles away from where I am right now. That's pretty it's cool, amazing. actually. Sometimes, you know, because I'm, I'm right by Manhattan, you get sick of all that. Kind of look forward I couldn't to do it. I spent some time in New York, and uh, although I was intrigued by the, the different distinct smells every block mm-hmm. that you go. Um, yeah, not a big crowd person, am I? Sometimes uh, multiple <laughs> smells per block. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, in a building, floor by floor smells. Oh, we can tell the Indians are living here. No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah so you, one house you smell like Cinnabons, the next one is just like bum stench. It's, uh, it's kind of <laughs> jarring. Yeah, it's like who's boiling like who's boiling cabbage and piss in here? Yeah, <laughs> but you know, keeps things exciting. Uh, so we got a we got a bunch of stuff going on. Um, I missed the show last week too, so some of these news stories might be uh, old news. Isn't that the weird thing about the internet? If it's like three days old, everyone's like, "Dude, I heard about that already. Move on." It's like, yeah, but it's three more days until you see it on the regular news and people talking about it on talk shows. You know well, what I mean? That and not everyone just clicks refresh on like YouTube every single day, so they're up with the latest trends. You know, some people don't sit in front of their computers all day. So, you- hmm. YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. Well, I don't know. Like, yeah. like you stream with a U stream, U S T R E that U T U B E. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm. and that's videos too. Yeah, they have they have a couple videos. Um, I yeah. have to check that out. Yeah, I think one or two people go there. But uh, you know, you got to be quick because then people get on your case uh, about posting old stuff if you haven't seen it. The second it comes out, it's, it's kind of like a skill. You got to practice at it. I do love that about YouTube. I love the comments on YouTube. I'm not a dick in anywhere else, but if I'm on YouTube, even if I loved what I saw, I'll just be like, your mom sucked dick for crack. Just for my <laughs> comment. It's just they're, they're total assholes and nobody fucking mods that shit. I love it. It's like, hey, that really hurts. Oh, I know. And then somebody gets on and you're like, what? Don't you understand the rules of the Internet, stupid? As soon as you start crying about it, there's going to be fucking 30 more people come in and tell you how many dicks your mom smokes for crack. Then they'll have their reaction video where they're calling out all the haters. (laughs) I know. And isn't it? Are people people still use haters? Apparently. I don't know how that caught on. That's like a, I don't know, I thought people past 14 didn't talk like that, but apparently that's like ingrained in uh, people's vocabularies now. Uh, that is hilarious. I do love that. Haters. It's like, yeah, you know what? Guess what? 
I'm going to be 40 next year. I'm a fucking hater because I fucking hate everything anyway. <laughs> when you get as old as me, you will be a hater too. Yeah. You'll yeah, realize it's called it's cynicism. Bad. I'm sorry you can't spell it. Go ahead and put a Z on the end of haters. <laughs> You'll realize how much everything sucks soon. So I'm sorry I, I interrupted. You do have some uh, some old nude stories, like about that blimp that blew up and shit. Or I didn't even hear about that yet. That's, <laughs> I'll find out about that <laughs> next week. <laughs> I'm so far behind. I, just, I, uh, I had uh, a company party on um tuesday and you know it's fun you know uh it was like at a bowling alley they rent out the whole place but the problem is that they have um free unlimited alcohol top shelf and that that sounds like a good thing until you have to go to work the next day and then you realize it's a horrible horrible idea and they're trying to curb that so that this year they said um no free shots for anybody so, you know, people had to order mixed drinks to, like, slow it down. But uh, <laughs> yeah. these people uh, that, that I was with kept ordering shots, and they were, like, $15 a piece. And I'm like, you are stupid because all you have to do, watch. You want, you want a tequila shot? Uh, hey, bartender, Patron on the rocks. Free. Right. All you got to do is ask for ice cubes. $15 a round, though, not $15 a shot, right? No, it was $15 a shot. Are you shitting me? No, I am totally serious. Wow. Yeah, that's that's Manhattan for you. Yeah, no shit. Well, well hey, I, I hate to be I hate to be the rude, but what's a Pepsi Cola call she out of machine right now? <laughs> uh, out of you machine. have to get your ATM card. We don't have machines. You got to go to a cheesy bodega on the corner. Do I you guys have the uh, the Netflix fuck? Kiosks and shit popping up too. The DV kiosks that you can. You have to you like actually, go to Long Island for that, or you know, like the boroughs, you know, Queens, Brooklyn, um, in Manhattan. I, I, I haven't seen one of those. But you know, what I'm talking about though. Right? Yeah, I was in Long Island um, a couple weeks ago, and I saw one for the first time. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I think so too. But it's it's because it's it's so brand new. They're like they they advertise it like get your own and put it out there and collect your money as it rolls in. And uh, I looked into it and I was really sad to find that you can't like put out a porn one because mm-hmm. that would fucking be your money. I would <laughs> free porn, not free porn DVDs, but fucking like you know, what does it cost to fucking burn a DVD anymore? Like nine cents. And you could fucking slap out fucking three hours of fucking porn to these people fucking constantly, and they can go to some anonymous machine, drop their fucking, you know, card in there and everything, pull it out, and, and go home with it. That is a good idea. I'm too picky, though. It would take me, like, 75 minutes to pick out the perfect one. Because there's always something oh. in there that I, I don't want in there. I thought you liked the. I thought you were, were a connoisseur of the Asian porn. I thought that was your thing. That is, but then you got to find the one without the the blurred out crotches and, you know, uh, a lot of uh, a, lo- a lot of those then they get weird. They throw in like crabs and shrimp and <laughs> scat and like there's a lot oh, of weird scat. stuff going on. It's like just be normal. I see, I don't think of shit when I think of scat. I think of Ella Fitzgerald when I fucking think of scat. Or I think, you know, I I think of Mr. Carruthers when I think of scat. I don't that that kills me now when they when people talk about about scat. But I did uh, I did want to bring up something since I know you have the uh, the, the kind of Asian fetish. Uh, and it, I'm sorry to go back to moving and everything, but uh, I have three children: uh, a little girl that is six, uh, a middle child. I can't remember what his name is. He's the fucking middle kid. He's 16, <laughs> and uh, a, a, an older son who's uh, 18 who's in college right now, and. Uh, he just went this fall <laughs> and we were packing up the house and my middle child comes in with a big f- fucking folded up pile of papers <laughs> and hands them to me and goes, these aren't mine. And it was all printer paper. And what it was, was uh, my oldest boy has a hentai fetish oh, and no. it was nothing <laughs> but a bunch of uh, animated Asian porn. Tons of it. In fact, he ran out of notebook paper or uh, out of uh, printer paper at one point, and some of it was on notebook paper. Why was and he printing it up? It, so he could use it. I, 
Did he not have a computer? Like she shared, a, she shared a room with his brother. Oh, right? I see. So he had to like make quick trips so, to yeah, the bathroom. They, they didn't or like something. sit in there and fucking whack off both together while they were looking at the shit. Right. Um, but now the running gag is, is he always used to say, oh, yeah, I'm looking up uh, cheats for Fallout 3. And that's why you always had to have the printer in the room. And I'm like, how many fucking cheats are you getting? You're running. How do you run a whole cartridge of black ink out? It's like, Straight dude, you ink. beat Fallout 3 like two months ago. Yeah, no shit. So, yeah, he, uh, and what was crazy is some of the shit that he had was like, uh, I don't Are you familiar, fairly familiar with the Sonic series of games? Sonic the Hedgehog? Yeah, yeah. You hold okay, right and uh, you jump once in a while and then you beat the board. Yeah. Well, they have, like, this whole pantheon of characters now. Yeah, I use pantheon, bitches. Wow. And uh, <laughs> it's this white cat-like thing with bat wings. But there was, like, all these different, like, Sonic characters in these, like, hardcore fucking this porn shit. I don't mean, like, just, like, sucking a dick or getting, you know, this or that. But, like, you know, fucking three dicks at once and, you know, uh, double ass, double pussy penetration and shit. And it's just crazy shit. And I'm sitting there looking through it. I'm like, this is fucked up. And my wife is like, I don't even want to look at it. And my buddy Eric, who's been on the show a few times, uh, who was helping us move, is like, uh, you, you going to just throw that away? <laughs> I'm like it's cartoon porn, you fuck. You yeah, I never, I never understood that. I don't understand the hentai either. It's like, look, there's you can look at all sorts of pictures of real people fucking, and it's. But I guess that if that's your thing, gives I a whole new meaning to the characters' tails and knuckles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, that does every time I hear the the, the word knuckles. Now I think of uh, something completely. Completely different. Oh yeah, I'm looking in your chat room there. They have Pokemon porn and all that. Oh yeah, I just can't. I couldn't believe the the depth of it. There's been like Simpsons porn out there for ages now, and I just don't. Oh yeah, fan type porn. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, I just I don't get it. (laughs) Just give me, just give me your regular, you know, ball gag, uh, double black anal penetration, and I'm good. Yeah, you know the basics. Yeah. Yeah, Disney porn. A Disney porn was around back before, you know, the internet was huge when I was young. Um, <laughs> there was a, I used to get um, a catalog, and you had to pay $15 for this catalog. It was from a bookstore in L.A. called Amok, A-M-O-K. And uh, it was, it, was it, it touted itself as all the extremes in print. And it was. You could get, like, uh, uh, textbooks that uh, um, forensic pathologists use and shit like that with just horrendous pictures and what was cool is this was like a two inch thick fucking catalog and it was all like excerpts from the books you were going to buy and pictures and all that Mm -hmm. and uh, they had uh, a little bit of a blue section and uh, I always remember one of the things in that was uh, it was Snow White uh, getting fucking slammed by all seven dwarves well six of the dwarves and Dopey was Grumpy was up behind Snow White fucking her but Dopey was up behind Grumpy fucking him in the ass because he was the odd man out and didn't have, like, couldn't, didn't have a hand or a hole or anything. So, yeah, all. I'm, like, trying to do the math thinking, like, six, six holes. Uh, I'm only coming up with three. One in the tush, one in the bush, two hands, hmm. one mouth. And uh, feet? Where was the other one? Yeah, I'm missing one. Maybe one was getting a foot jab. Maybe a couple of them were. I know there was. I know there was some uh, dwarf. Uh, or, uh, yeah, dwarf on dwarf butt action. Hmm. All right. So that yeah. that's what Listen, you used as a kid. <laughs> I didn't mean to take you away from the news. I just. I thought I just realized that. Yeah, the whole Asian porn thing. I don't even know how we got here. I have we're, no we're, idea either. We, lowest common denominator every time with us, man. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> uh, maybe it's the booze, but don't don't blame it. Four minutes into the show, we're talking about scat. We're going to lighten it up a little bit with some uh, some other scat. Yeah, remember that? I'm a scat man. Yeah. Classic jams from the mid-90s. You familiar with that one, John? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. I yeah. hate you a lot. Like to nostalgitize. I really hate going back and listening to some of this. I will probably say if we're going to go 90s, um, never, ever fell for the whole Sugar Ray thing. Never. Fuck you, Mark McGrath, and you know why. <laughs> I just want to fly. <laughs> I hate your guts. 
Uh, yep. Because now the rest of the show, that's stuck in my head. That is fucking firmly embedded there now. You know what? I don't have it to play the sound bite, so you're you're in luck on that one. Mm. Uh, you want to do so some, you had like, some real stories or, you know? Yeah. Or, okay. Do a real story and then we'll get back Let's to it. Let's make some up. Let's pretend like we're the real news. I've, I've wanted to do that for a podcast. We'll, we'll pretend like we're the real news and just make shit up. All right. Obama passed a bill today uh, about... Doctors. <laughs> okay. They're not allowed anymore. No more doctors? No more doctors. Only witch doctors. Witch, witch doctors and medicine men? Yeah. Yeah. We're going back to medieval times with as far as medicine goes. Just a couple leaves and twigs and a prayer. <laughs> there was no silverware in medieval times. Therefore, there is no silverware at medieval times. I'm sorry. I've always told myself forever I will make that quote whenever anybody says medieval times. Are you living That's on it. a train track? Can you hear it? <laughs> yes, I can. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I can. I, I'm in. I'm in. A, I have a house now with a mud room because I'm in the country. I have a mud room, which is a. Uh, it's the house that like you have the front door that all the salesmen and shit come to. That's how you differentiate salesmen and company from out of town comes to. But uh, all your friends and everybody come back to the mud room door. Hmm. And that's where you come in. You take your muddy fucking shoes off. There's a sink in here. And there's my washer and dryer, my deep freeze. And, of course, you know, I haven't had time. I was going to put a uh, – I'm going to actually wall myself in and build a little studio in the basement and shit, a nice little soundproof room and all that, but I haven't had time. Uh, and the only place you can actually hear the trains like that is uh, from the mudroom. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's Amtrak and uh, the big uh, BNSF um, freights that go through and uh, you're talking shit sometimes with four engines and 100 cars on it. It's a very, very interesting for about three seconds or <laughs> maybe five minutes if you're high. <laughs> uh, all right, let's do a news story. Uh, Bill O'Reilly, is that too old or can we can we still talk about that? Oh, no. no. I, I love me some, some Bill O'Reilly. Any uh, Bill O'Reilly fans here? I, uh, I am. Well, you know what? I, I don't like him, but he was actually right uh, in this instance when he was on The View. Uh, I'll play the video and then, we'll, and then we'll talk about it. Have you got the clip? I do. Oh, cool. We have to uh, hear an auto privilege commercial first because I hit pause for more than five seconds. Uh a cozy conversation between the ladies of The View and Bill O'Reilly gets a little heated. During an interview with the Fox News host over the controversial mosque at Ground Zero, hosts Whoopi Goldberg and Joy Behar walked off the set in a fit of rage. Here's what happened. Muslims didn't kill us on 9-11? Is that what you're saying? So he said Muslims killed us on 9-11, and they said you yep. can't say that. And he said, what, Muslims didn't kill us? And then Joy Behar just stands up and says, I don't want to be here anymore. And then Whoopi gets up, and they both walk off. Now, if you have a talk show, shouldn't you, like, sit your ass down and actually give your opinion instead of just flipping out and walking off the set? In instead of posturing like you do, because Whoopi – it doesn't matter, but Joy, she's got her own talk show and shit now. So yeah, that's because didn't she do the whole hands washing gesture and everything as she fucking marched off? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They said, you know, they said, oh, you got to say extremists, but like, then they like got up and ran what? away. Like that's, you know, that's not how you uh, have a debate on a talk show. No. Well, moments after the... Why, why is Whoopi Goldberg wearing, like, a winter coat on the set, too? That was a little weird. But uh, <laughs> then Barbara Walters... Uh, that's uh, a winter coat. That's her pelt. <laughs> she's... I don't know. She's, I mean, she just has a really weird body. I don't know. Two hosts walked off. Co-host Barbara Walters called their actions unprofessional. Mr. O'Reilly did clarify his remarks, saying that it was Muslim extremists who were responsible for the 9-11 attacks, and he apologized to anyone who felt he was demeaning all Muslims. Minutes after the apology... Oh God, everyone's so goddamn sensitive nowadays. I agree. I, I did like... Because, you know what, I... I I can see things. The gift that I have, Jason, mm -hmm. is I can see things for exactly what the fuck they are. 
And what people lose so much sight of, and they're trained to lose sight of, they're trained to to, to believe a certain way, is that um, Bill O'Reilly and Keith Oberman and all them actually stand for something. They don't. They're fucking entertainers. Yeah. I think Bill O'Reilly is very fucking entertaining. Do I agree with what he says? No, not really. But I think it's entertaining as fuck because what he does is no different than what you and I do. He right, says right. shit and waits for people to go, <gasps> you know? Yeah, this is exactly why he did it. He was He's looking for a reaction. Yeah. But instead Bill of, like, if him. they had a, a huge argument, that would have been, like, really entertaining. But walking off is just, yeah. you know, I don't know. Yeah, Bill Maher, Bill Maher even said, you know, hey, I've had O'Reilly on. I see what he is. He's the same thing I am. Uh, he goes, and I disagree with him. I don't like his tactics a lot. But he goes... I agree with him. It, you know, you can't say it was fucking Muslims that killed us on nine eleven. Do you can't say that? Yes, I can. I can say <laughs> that the, the reason. Well, here, here, I can even go so far on mm-hmm. this show, the Brink of Sandy show, is to say <laughs> that uh, the entire reason that the the planes even crashed into the twin towers is because that the terrorists piloting the planes were distracted by getting. Airhead from Allah. Wow. Yeah. I haven't heard that theory before. I think that's what it was. It was some some divine airhead from Allah, and uh, they didn't even see I don't think that was their original target. I think they were headed for the Empire State Building to be much more iconic. If I was a terrorist, I'd take down the Empire State Building. It's it's New York's dick, isn't it? I mean, basically. Yeah. If they did that, they wouldn't have had to redo the trailer for the original Spider-Man movie, too. (laughs) Exactly. Because, yeah, you, the, the, the Empire State Building is New York's dick, and the Statue of Liberty uh, would be the, the New York's pussy. Mm-hmm. But they didn't touch either one of those. The, the, the World Trade Center? I didn't, fuck, I've never even understood what the fuck it's supposed to be. Well, that's just because our government was responsible for it, but that, that's a whole other debate. Can I say <laughs> that, or are we pulled off the air now? It was, <laughs> yeah, no shit. I, I asked Andy that when we, uh, my, my partner... On, uh, on the show we do, whatever the fuck it is. Um, <laughs> you know, he always would get mad at me because I would always make, he, he's a firm believer, and he was in the Army, so he would know. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you say, I'm going to kill the president, all of a sudden the Secret Service is kicking your fucking door in and arresting you, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I said, well, finally I was like, well, what would you rather I did? Would you rather I sat and made fun of Allah? Because if you make fun of Allah, uh, you know, uh, Muslim extremists are going to kill you. Or would you rather I said, you know, I'm going to kill the president. He goes, yeah, I, I guess I'd rather go with the president thing. So that's how terrified everybody is of it. I, I said it on the other show. I, um, I solved how to avoid another nine 11. All you have to do is put a mosque on the top floor of every single building. Yes. Problem solved. Yes. There you go. They're not going to knock the building down now. Look at that. They should have just called me. I got all the answers. Or just, or just the only uh, worldwide flight service is Air Israel. Mm-hmm. Or that. Although yeah. then you can't have uh, pork rinds on the, on the flight. I can do without them. I'm from the country. Pork rinds a little overrated, but yeah. I do think they are overrated. I don't get the big fascination with them. <laughs> I don't either. I'll take I, a sun I really chip. And I've been very. You know what I do like? Mm-hmm. Head cheese. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which yeah. is like an amalgamation of all the shit you would never want to know came from a pig. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a spicy, a spicy hot red, uh, red hot uh, uh, head cheese on a cracker, fucking wonderful. I like a sun chip. Although those new bags, oh my god, have you have you gotten a bag lately? Yeah, are you a sun chip fan? Never, never got <clears throat> on that uh, that band. I'm not a whole grain guy. You know? I am, but those uh, those bags are really really loud. Oh, they're not the uh, the original bags anymore. No, they made them like um, out of pure recycled material, but like the volume on them are like ridiculous. They they said <laughs> on the news that they were as loud as <clears throat> as loud as a passing subway, but I'm not buying that. Do they sound like the trains going by my house right now? Uh, kinda, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. It sound, they, it, so if you're eating a bag, it sounds I'm like you're what fucking what a scarecrow in a pile of leaves. Yeah, here's this. a guy opening up a new bag of sun chips. Uh, hard to get out of. But literally, it is the loudest material known. Hear that? 
if you ever wanted to get like a, this one little chip out of That's what it sounds like. Every time you reach the grab for a chip, it is out of control. I just wanted to scream for him to get out of the house before it burns to the ground. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow, what are you doing out there in the wildfires eating sun chips? <laughs> I uh, got to take a quick break because my whiskey is empty, and when the whiskey is empty, the jokes stop. Yeah, my bladder is full, so that's perfect. All right, so uh, I'm going to play a quick promo or whatever, and then we'll be right back on the Brick Society Show. Goodbye. Steve and Cliff has a show. Called the Steve and Cliff Show. And Steve and paid me to tell you something you ought to know about the Steve and Cliff fucking show. Hey, everybody, this is John from Random Ass Radio. After a hard day of podcasting, I like to crack a cold one, kick back, and listen to one of my favorite podcasts, The Stephen Cliff Show. Week in and week out, Stephen Cliff consistently brings the funny. His brand of alcohol-fueled humor is a soothing balm upon my sun-blistered soul. Sometimes, though, the podcast just isn't enough. That's why I thank whatever God there is in heaven for the Stephen Cliff Show forums. If you go to the com and click on the forum link, you will be transported to a magical place where the only rule is to have fun. You want to find out the newest shit about the show? It's there, man. You want to talk about episodes, Steve's kick-ass guests, Check out some great pics of the show. It's there, man. You want to just chit-chat, suggest things for the show, or randomly post the word poop like I do. Then sign up. It's all fucking there, man. Become a part of something big. Join the Stephen Cliff Show forums today. I need All a right. garage door opener for my balls. What? What the fuck? Just I don't aired. like the smell that usually forms down there if I go for a couple days without well, washing. I'm proud of you. It smells like onions, onions wrapped in asshole. What the fuck are we talking about? Uh, hey, Dad, remember that one time I got that cock stuck in my ass? He just went over legs and arms. In a truck not too hard to locate, featuring painted images of a peeled banana, the exposed <laughs> pot shaped like a condom, and a shirtless man saying, I protect myself to you. What kind of fucking question is this? I'm the host of the show, and I get put down on every episode. I love you, Tim. John is a man of God. Shed his precious blood. Shed, Shed his, his precious, precious blood. blood. And died. And died. Oh, my sin. And now the three guys that taught your mom that thing you like. It's Minor Detail. MinorDetailPodcast.com Let's cut to the chase. I'm DJ, and I do a little something called the Green Light Show. Now, I want you to be a fan of the show, so I'm making you listen to this sample. And, and these girls, they think, oh, as long as I show off my tits, oh, I'll, I'm, I'm fat. I'll wear this skin-tight shirt and show off all my tits. Yeah, I see That'll that. look I real see, good. I see that 
a lot, actually, and it's it's a uh, you know it's it's rather disgusting. And I've heard these girls will say stuff like, "Well, you're looking." <laughs> yeah, because I want to throw up. Yeah, just because I'm looking at your enormous exposed tits, that doesn't mean I like them. Yeah, exactly. Like driving by a car wreck, if I were to see a six-year-old boy's head smashed and run over by an SUV. Just because I can't look away, that doesn't mean I like the way it looks. I went to go see Toy Story 3. I'm not going to... I don't mean to spoil the movie for anybody, Mm -hmm. but Andy dies. Does he get AIDS? Andy gets AIDS in Toy Story 3 (laughs) Um, from a gay orgy. He got drunk. He went up to... At college. The the plot of this is, it it shows Andy leaving his parents in the beginning, his mom's house. Yeah. His single mom. Where the fuck is Andy's dad? His mom's a single mom. So the the opening scene is just Andy going... Out of here, Mom. Fuck off. And Andy drives off to his college. Smoking weed. Andy gets to college, and the first thing, he opens the door to his new apartment. And yeah. uh, the, his his roommates, who he's never met her in there, mm-hmm. they go, hey, Andy, rub, rub this on your tongue. Andy starts fucking all these dudes. It's a big, giant orgy. Wow. It's like gays and lesbos and normals, and, uh-huh. and they're all just intertwined fucking. That's weird. And, uh, and then... Woody shows up, but it's not Woody. It's Andy's dick with a cowboy hat on it. <laughs> and he goes, check out my Woody! If you like what you hear, head on over to greenlightshow.com. You can find out everything about the show right from the homepage. Greenlightshow.com. See you there. Computer right now. I'm old and I've never used the internet before, so here's all my info. I should have never been allowed to get a credit card or a bank account at this age, uh, let alone Internet access. That's what I mean. How do people still fall for the – because I constantly still get – I mean, I know and I know you guys do that a lot here on the show. Uh, call these fucking, like, phone scam guys. Who the fuck still falls for that? <laughs> the, hey, uh, there's, like, $20 billion in this bank account, and we just need to, like – we want to transfer it. Um, what we need from you is, uh, you know, just a couple hundred bucks. We'll take care of that. Yeah, and they're like, oh, yeah, well, if it's just a couple hundred and I'll get a hundred million um, relative I didn't know I ever had. <laughs> no. It just, it, it kills me. That really does kill me. That they're, I guess, I don't, I'm not, not trying to sound egotistical, but I've always, I guess I'm just smarter than that. And I, I have always liked to think that most people are smarter than that. But God, as I've gotten older and just watched people, they're not. They're just simply fucking not. <laughs> it's smarter. Well, I mean, that, the email said totally legit at yahoo.com. So I knew it was a, a legit thing. Oh, well, yeah, Yahoo. That's different. That'd be like if it was, you know, Google's name was on it. That that was uh, that one I did on the show a while back. It was like U.S. government at hotmail dot com, and the lady's like, "Well, it was, said it was from the U.S. government." <laughs> like, really? Really? So there was a dot gov at the end of the name. Oh no, no, no! It was hotmail. <laughs> Could you just like throw away your computer, please? Because you are now banned from the internet. Well, why can't I find these people? Because once again, I would do shows. Three, four nights a week. If I had those people, I could fund the show with. Yeah, exactly. This would be a daily show, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, I have smart listeners who know better than to give me money. Dicks. <laughs> Fucking dicks. They're like, you're just going to spend it on whiskey. I'm like, yeah, but that <laughs> makes the show funnier. I, yeah, I'd so like to hurl a he boy you right now. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard my sober casts? They're not very good. <laughs> I've never done one. I'm terrified to try and do a sober cast. I've done about five, and I hate them all. Uh, I could, because I've thought about it. I really have. I'm like, you know what, man? Maybe the one thing that's holding me back is uh, I'm just like, uh, you know, uh, taking too many drugs and drinking too much and everything when I do these. But then, you know, the other part of me that really needs the drugs and the booze is like, no, he's stupid. Don't listen to him. So I haven't tried it yet. Yeah, I've come out with such gem episodes as Low Blood Sugar Level and Mellow Sunday when I was sober. <laughs> Mellow Sunday? Yeah. Easy listening, Brink of Sanity. <laughs> exactly. NPR, <laughs> Brink of Sanity. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. The people tune in for the drunk. You just have to give them a special brand of drunk that they enjoy. Tune in for the drunk, stay for the audio defects and technical difficulties. (laughs) That's right. 
<laughs> stay for my fucking whiskey meltdown over whatever fucking thing goes wrong with Skype this week. <laughs> See real tears on the brink of sanity this week. <laughs> Oh, I love that. I've done so many shows where I go back to to do a little editing and I cuz my wife used to tell me all the time, she's like, "You black out <laughs> and then you talk, but you're not really talking. You're just talking nonsense." I'm like, "What? I'm slurring?" She goes, "No, you speak perfectly fine, but you're just saying words that don't make any sense. They're words they're just all in the wrong context. order." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I and I and finally, finally, uh since I started podcasting, yeah, I've heard myself doing it and I'm like, "Oh my god, that's gold. That is gold. <laughs> Why haven't I been recording this for years?" She's like, "Oh my god, really? I thought that would break you." I'm like, "No, that's funny shit." Cuz there'll be people talking to me and everything and I'm yeah, like you said, I'm like baseball gorilla watermelon. I said watermelon bite face. And they're like, what are you fucking talking about? And I'm like, I'm sitting here doing the thing that Dan Marino used to do when he was a groundskeeper for Farden Land. And I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I love hearing myself in a blackout. Because I never could before. Thank you, Internet. I think and the most that, amazing but, part about this is that you edit your shows. You, you cut do. them down to a lean three and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, I actually the, the way I edit my shows is because uh, um, uh, I actually do throw the breaks in and everything. I'll go to the end first and I'll find my end point because a lot of times I'll shave like a fucking 45 minutes to an hour off of that fucking mess. My God. I'll find a good end point. The end like, point meaning somebody... like when you uh, completely went insane and like just stopped making sense totally or you you leave those parts in too? Oh, I've had them. I've, my favorite ending one was uh, – yeah, I think it went something like this. I can't do it justice, and I can't tell you what episode it was, but uh, it ended like – and I actually went through and found this and made this the end point where it fucking faded into the music and everything because I had the music at the end of shit uh, when I edit. And it was uh, – it was a uh, – well, that's it. You could all fucking suck my dick because you don't fucking care. I love you. And that's how it ended. And to me still to this day when I hear that, I get goosebumps. <laughs> I really do, because then it fades into fucking uh, what it's the Queens of the Stone Age deal. Not the end of fade, but the actual Queens of the Stone Age, uh, the uh, feel good hit of the summer nicotine volume. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that that to me is my favorite. And then I go back and uh, I, you know, based on what we actually did, because I like, I hate to say that I do any planning, but I, I'll come up with like what music I want to use for the breaks during the live show. Um, but a lot of times I'll go back. And just add one song. You know, I don't need a fucking twenty minute break. Mm-hmm. You know, in the in the in the podcast. Yeah, yeah. So I'll go pick an appropriate song that kind of fits in. Uh, yeah, I hate to give that away. I wanted all the nerds to find that, but yeah, there there's an actual theme, a thread that runs through uh, the the music that I picked during the breaks. And then I take out all the early shit because ever since I missed that one show by not hitting record, I hit record as soon as I open up my fucking recording software now. Mm-hmm. So that, that, that's pretty much it. I, and then I throw in my commercials, which I need to make brand new commercials. I'm, uh, I'm where you were at uh, a while back when you were bitching about it. Like, I really need to come up with new fucking bumpers and everything because I just fucking, you know, have it. <laughs> and it's so and I'm like, yeah, I could just set up and do it. And I just fucking have it. I've been too lazy. You do make good bumpers. I still play the, uh, the Stephen Cliff one that you made because it kind of like promotes both of your shows at once. I don't even remember which one I did. You did, uh, you parodied Every Rose Has Its Thorn. <laughs> oh, my, uh, my, uh, oh, God, I can't think of his name right now. Oh, that, cool, I love you. I lo- you know what I'm drinking tonight? That's actually in this episode, by the way. Uh, what's that? Oh, did you play it? Yeah, you didn't hear it. You were taking a piss, but yeah, I played it. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's, uh, uh, that's my Will, my Will, uh, Farrell impersonation. Actually, the whole time I was doing it, I'm like, God, is everybody going to realize that I'm just doing Will Ferrell here? No. <laughs> I mean, not, not actually that I sounded like him, but that's something that I would picture him fucking doing, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. Like, and then, you know, kicking back with the same. Like, uh, who the fuck did he used to do? Um, big mustache, can't think of the guy's name, singer. He used to do as a skit on SNL, and I know how much you hate new SNL and all that, but uh, oh, God damn it. I know who you're talking about, but I don't remember. It's in the Naked Gun movies. Or one of the, the first Naked Gun movie, I believe. 
And you see, I'm stuck thinking Tom Jones and all that shit, or uh, or Wayne Newton, but it's the other one between the two of them. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, Stephen Stephen actually approached me about that. He's like, "Hey, can you do something to bring attention to my forums? I'll donate some money to your show." I'm like, "Well, uh, if you're gonna donate money to the show, fuck yeah, <laughs> yeah, hey, I'll I'll do like some audio that makes everybody think that I'm sucking your dick. How much are you gonna fucking donate?" So yeah. We're not recording. This isn't live, right? What we're doing now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit record because it's... Uh, uh, yeah, the, the whole dick second thing, uh, true. <laughs> yeah, it actually started getting interesting. So if uh, if people, if it sounded like we were in the middle of a conversation when we came back from the break, we were. Um, I thought we would like, left on a low note, and then, as usual, as soon as we stop recording, it gets interesting, so I hit record again, and uh, I think it picked up a little. Well, you don't just record straight through? No, because I now I'm paranoid about losing episodes, so I, I stop it and save it like every thirty minutes. Um, can I do a small commercial for you right now? And this is just I'm gonna I'm gonna use some brand name Reaper FM, man. I'm telling you, they have a Mac version now. Reaper FM is what I use. You mm-hmm. can start recording and just let it record. And if you get real drunk and you're done with the show, and you're like fuck this, and you just want to, you just fuck you pull the plug on your computer. That shit is all there the next day. That's and you cool. can go back in, edit it, do whatever you want. But you don't – As long, the only thing that you can do to fuck it up is not hit record. As long as you hit record – Which you, you have record, done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. I've, I've been recorded. I've, uh, I fucked up like that once. And normally, even though I'm a, a fucking horrible alcoholic and everything else, um, I'm pretty good. Uh, at learning from my mistakes. If I fucked up and didn't hit record once, it generally doesn't happen again. Gotcha. Oh, I have spilled two beers on my laptops. So uh, <laughs> it's, I, you're reaching for the fucker and it moves out of your way. I hate that. You're reaching for your drink and it's like, hey, I'm going to scare aside. And then you fucking yeah. knock it over. I think this is my second show with the new computer. And the very first show, I came in and spilled a, a whiskey on the keyboard. Like instantly. <laughs> Was it a straight whiskey, though? Um, yeah, it was a straight whiskey. So, oh, then you're good, man. Yeah, the, key, the keyboard was fine. Uh, it's just yeah. that I spilt like six dollars of Johnny Walker Black Label. So, oh. <laughs> so you're on the old Johnny Walker kick now, huh? Yeah, I yeah, that's, cool that's some good shit. Yeah, you know he's been treating me pretty well, except for uh, this Wednesday morning, which we already went over that. And, uh, he wasn't. Too, uh, hey, but, I forgot to ask you what was uh, what was the party for? You never did say what the party was actually. Oh, uh... uh, once a year, my company has uh, just a party, so everyone can like mingle and you know they call it you know like team building, so all the employees from different departments can get to know each other and you know blah blah blah. So they rent out a bowling alley and open bar and food and all that stuff and. Um, I love the fact that it's a bowling alley. Yeah, it was, you it was know, pretty fun. There's there's not that much difference then between you and I, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> if you're partying at a bowling alley, welcome to my Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, like they had like seven people to a lane, but for some reason, I like nobody wanted to bowl. So I'm like, we start off with like three people in each game. One person left. By the end, I'm just bowling by myself. My arms like still sore. It was, bowled like you know it was free so i bowled you know like i don't even know six games you know when i was a kid uh i was a uh, potluck methodist uh-huh. and we would what, like, what is that well i belonged to the methodist church and we always and i we've always called them my dad always called them potluck methodist because uh the methodist church is very very tame they're not like uh they're like well, gays are kind of bad, but it's no big deal. And they're very, very, you know, milk toast fucking. They're not hellfire and brimstone. They're not Catholic. They're just like, just, you know, donate the money. And after the service, you would go down to the basement and have a big potluck. So that's the thing. It's like, well, even if you're this or that, just bring a covered dish. When you said potluck, I thought you meant like you all reached into a hat and that was your religion, whatever you came up with. No, no, a, a potluck is where you have a big giant meal and everybody brings a covered dish of their own. Well, and we would I have, like a, and I always loved that. I really did because I was a fat little fucking kid. And it was like Sunday school and church fucking sucked. But boy, once it was done, you went downstairs and there was a fucking spread. I've even talked to my wife as I've gotten into my cups and been like, you know, we're back out here way in the country again. And we're, you know, there's a little town a few miles up uh, that we're part of. You know, that's our address and shit. Mm-hmm. And it's like, 
Uh, you know what? Maybe we'll join a church up there just uh, to get a good, you know, good hungover meal in and everything before football on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. I want to start potlucks up again. Oh, potlucks are awesome. Well, you, you know, you, the, the, whoever the fuck it was that was putting fucking cyanide in the Tylenol ruined potlucks for everyone, man. Asshole. Those dickheads fucked up potlucks just across the board. There's always one. Uh, and uh, I, I, since I brought up the NFL, are you a follower or are you just an NBA guy? I am kind of. It's The commercials really get to me, though. Like, <clears throat> like now when they – like. They have touchdown, commercial, extra point, commercial, kickoff, commercial. And, like, I'm asleep by the time that third commercial break ends. So I, I like football, but the commercials really kill it for me. Now, you see, <clears throat> for me, I'm a Green Bay Packer fan, and this season with all the injuries kind of kills it for me. <laughs> it really is. It's, it's absolutely fucking destroying me, um, the, a team that, you know, I'm not, we're, we're not sports talk. I'm not going to. I'm not, that's right. That's the other thing about football, though. Like, there's so few games. A key guy gets injured, the like way your you're whole it, season. You're thing. saying what baseball does to me. Like this time of year, baseball in a baseball period, just third inning, I'm asleep if I try and watch it. Oh, third pitch, I'm done. I am in a coma. I say it's like 20 minutes. Like, who the fuck are you nodding at? Throw the fucking ball. There should be literally a six second rule on pitches. There yeah. should be. There should be. A, there should be a play clock. On fucking pitches. That would be awesome. And you could get called by the umpire for delay a game like you are in football. That would be fucking great. Or like, you know, in your case, a shot clock. A shot clock for pitches. That would be fucking just beautiful. How much better would the game be? I would actually watch baseball again. The, yeah, I, if I knew that a baseball game was going to be a – I mean, because like football. Because, um, dude, the last time I watched any kind of basketball has been forever. How long does the average basketball game last, start to finish? Two and a half hours, almost exactly every time. Yeah, so in a, in an NFL game is usually about three hours. Right. Um, which does show you how much bullshit goes on because they're 15-minute quarters. Yeah, exactly. We're talking exactly. about an hour game with two hours of bullshit all wrapped around it and shit. Uh, but baseball, fuck. Baseball just who still watches baseball? Who the fuck still fills those stadiums? Who pays those salaries? Apparently, ninety percent of people on my Facebook, because that's all I get. Oh my god, the Yankees are playing tonight. Oh my god, they're losing. Don't care. Yeah, I really, I really could care less. I, you know, if they maybe if they if they didn't vilify you anymore for being like Babe Ruth, I'd watch again. But yeah, now if you're like Babe Ruth, you're a dick. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess you're allowed to do steroids, but you're not allowed to be a raging alcoholic on the field. It's bullshit. And you, yeah, exactly. You should be allowed. Yeah, it's a handicap. I, Drinking uh, makes you worse, so you should be allowed to drink. Yeah, I think everybody should be a Ty Cobb. They should do it like, um, you know, rec leagues where they have like a barrel full of beer on the <laughs> <Yes>. second base. <laughs> yes, I so tried to get into that, but they said I was too in shape at the time. <laughs> Cause I really, I was like softball with a fucking barrel. Hell yes, let's do this. And they're like, no, we're we're really looking for people a little a little softer. Now I could do it, but I don't I don't fit the age limit. So. It's like, how about now? I'm yeah, I'm very pudgy now. <laughs> I'm slow and fat, and I'm like fucking well in need of a twelve step program. And they're like, yeah, no. <laughs> Um, all right, last last sports thing. I did start an NBA show. It's called the New York Knicks Podcast dot com. I uh, just got added to iTunes and uh, just got our new logo, which looks fantastic. Same guy who did the Brink of Sanity logo. So um, if you're interested in basketball, check that out. Uh, not claiming to be an expert, but, um, you know, it's like the bitter Knicks point of view of uh, NBA. And, um, you know, we try and keep it as light as possible. And uh, we're doing a live fantasy draft on, uh, what, the 25th? So you can join the Fantasy League. Just go to the New York Knicks Podcast dot com. All right. That was my plug for the day, other than the three promos that I play during the break. That's it, though. Four promos. That's it. Uh, on to news stories. Uh, <laughs> I, I found this funny. The, the website thinkbeforeyouspeak.com is going over... They're trying to stop uh, all the the gay bashing that's going on lately because all the gays are killing themselves now. 
It's it's like um, it's like the movie The Event, but they're all gay. <laughs> they're just running and jumping off of buildings, and now uh, they have a little counter on the bottom left, and it says "Used today on Twitter." Fag fifteen hundred plus times. So gay a- fifteen hundred plus. Dyke only six eighty one, so that, that's good. But then it says our goal zero. So, um, what, what about turd puncher? Turd puncher. They gotta. They gotta extend this thing because there's so. Yeah, the same. What about faggot? Yeah. I don't know. Queer bait. That was always my favorite. Not queer. Queer bait. Ass like, pirate. Uh, I'm looking to catch a queer. And I think that you would make a fine thing that I could put on the end of my line and throw out <laughs> and bring one in. How many times was turd burglar used? I don't I know. I love turd burglar. Isn't that great alliteration? Turd burglar to me is almost poetic. <laughs> the way it flows, a turd burglar. That is, that's a, it's a fucking, it's a beautiful use of phonetics, turd burglar. <laughs> I love that. Now, now I'm not condoning gay bashing. I'm just saying that I don't think it's... Like, <laughs> I am. God hates fags. <laughs> I, I just don't think it's an epidemic. Like, no, it's not. There was a couple of suicides, yes, but I don't think it's any more. I think just because we have the internet, we find out about it more. I really don't think that there's like a rise. It's like a, a trending thing. No, it's not. Actually... Uh, you know who the real gays are, are the ones who suck the big media cock that said it's a fucking epidemic because they were shoving it in your face and that's the only thing. You don't have a mind of your own. You have to listen to, to everything and follow. I'm sorry. To me, this is the biggest thing. I, I got a lot of uh, ugly feedback from people and, and a little hate mail because what was the whole thing was like wear purple yesterday or today or something uh, to honor the fallen um, suicide homosexual kids that were bullied or what the fuck ever. All right. Oof. Um, I didn't hear about that. I said, yeah. What, well, what I said, well, that was, no, that was the big thing on uh, Twitter, which I, I barely touch half the time, but I still haven't really figured out mind. Twitter. It's, it's like my Facebook status update, but a whole site for it. I, I don't know. I know people say it's a good marketing tool, but, uh, if you've seen my numbers, it's not really working out so well for me. So I don't know. You have to you have to get a bunch of uh, people that think just like you, well, and uh, oh, be also be a giant whore. I, I don't mean that as in your person of loose morals, which is a whole another bag there, Whitmore. Um, but uh, you have to be a complete media whore on Twitter. You have to fucking you what you want for Twitter to work for you. You have to have like five million people fucking following you. Yeah. All right. Um, but I happened to catch it on there, and that's what set me off because I had heard nothing about it until I saw that. Is uh, tomorrow everybody needs to wear purple uh, to honor uh, homosexuals who have committed suicide because of bullying. And I went on Facebook and uh, and everything, and a, and a bunch of other places uh, where where you know I post my fucking random bullshit billboards. And I was like, because I was I was incensed. I was very very pissed. I'm like, that's fucking bullshit. Uh, you know, why should I honor uh, a homosexual who committed suicide? I would rather wear purple, and I would wear purple on a day, uh, to honor any homosexual who came out and said, I'm a homosexual, and fucking live their life being a homosexual. All right? Instead of taking some cowardly ass way out because I was bullied. Well, guess what? Motherfuckers kill themselves because they were bullied because you spent your whole life growing up now being told that you're special and you're okay. And it just, fuck that. I think it's an insult. I think anybody who puts on purple for a homosexual, any homosexual who puts on purple for a homosexual that killed themselves because they were bullied because somebody outed them, fuck them. You're a fucking dipshit for fucking buying into that. I would wear purple for any motherfucker that's, that's sucked dick their whole life and been unrepentant about it. Any chick who sat there and fucking licked pussy her whole life and been unrepentant about it. And when somebody tried to bully her about it, said, fuck you, I like eating pussy. Or fuck you, I like sucking dick. I'm gay. I don't ask you what position you fucked your wife in last night. Fuck you, this is my life. 
Those are the people I would wear purple for. The people who took the cowardly, selfish way out by fucking killing themselves, by leaving their friends behind, by leaving their family behind, and by being a total pussy that can't take fucking life. Fuck you. And I'm sorry, I don't I don't mean to go off on your show, Jason. No, but bravo, just, man. That was that was awesome. I totally agree. Totally agree. It fucking destroys me because I have no I like to make jokes about everything. I love to sit here and say, faggot. You know why? Because People will fucking throw their hands up on their face like in Home Alone and go, oh, he said faggot. <laughs> I love that shit. I think that fucking shit's hilarious. I said a word and I made you fucking react. But Yeah, if you get I, that uptight like, over a word, you got to yeah. do some evaluation of if yourself. If you kill yourself over that word, oh, my God. If you, if you go fucking Macaulay Culkin over the fact that people think you were a faggot or people found out that you were a fag. Uh, so the fuck what? You're, you're gay. Be fucking gay, you stupid piece of shit. Don't be a selfish little emo fuck and fucking kill yourself over it. And then I got all sorts of shit like, oh, you don't get what bullying is. You don't realize how bad bullying is. Oh, really? Really? Exactly. But go through my 6th through 10th grade, all right? And tell me you'd still be alive, okay? Ask my father. I got <laughs> my fucking father growing up and tell me you don't know what fucking bullying is, you dipshit. I got destroyed the, the, in school for about five straight years. I, I know bullying, all right? And did you get called faggot? Because where I'm from that I had an earring in my ear. I pierced my ear at one point. And and what I was wow, was and, well, you were on this show with me when we did this one. I was a fucking faggot, you fucking faggot. You fucking faggot. You got your ear pierced, you fucking faggot. You di- you read. You read books for fun, you fucking faggot. But if you were yeah, a faggot, then so you would have killed yourself, right? No, because I've sucked a couple dicks. It ain't no big deal. Yeah. You know, it's a dick. Yeah. It's done. It's, it, like, be- it's, like, it's like if I was masturbating, but I'm doing it to somebody else with my mouth. <laughs> <Right>? that's, <laughs> that's all it is. <laughs> it's not a big fucking deal. Yeah, but I, I uh, yeah, I put up with so much, like, I don't know how bad, like, these kids could have had it to kill themselves because, you know, I can't imagine it being any worse than what I went through. And oh. just looking at, you know, taking an outside view of, like, you know, what my high school was like, you know, there were certain groups that got um, really, really harassed and... um I think it was even more accepted to, like, go off on anything back then. Like, people are too sensitive now. And, um, you know, back then, like, anything, anything. You you know, I was fat and had glasses. So just imagine how I did in high school, all right? You know, it's no reason to kill that yourself. Was, that was back in high school when it wasn't teasing. You get your ass beat. Yeah, exactly. I was a fat kid for a couple of years, and I got my fucking ass. I mean, I had to fight all the fucking time. Yeah, it's like, oh, he's fat. Let's bitch slap him. You know, let's bitch slap yeah. him because he's fat. It's and here, let me tell you something too. If you're gay and you're getting bullied and all this, let me explain one thing to you. My dad always told me if somebody's bullying you, you just stand up to him. You fucking haul off and bust him in the mouth or whatever. They're gonna find somebody easier. Guess what? That's a goddamn lie. <laughs> then they want revenge. I worst in my life. I fucking hauled off and busted them in the mouth. I fought them for the next three years. They were a year ahead of me. So for three years until I was a senior, and they finally fucking graduated ahead of me, I fought them at every fucking turn. Mm-hmm. Guess what? Life is, uh, uh, to steal a Dennis Leary line, life is hard. Get a fucking helmet. All right, you're gay. So what? That's your sexual orientation. I don't give a fuck who you sleep with. And guess what? 99% of the population doesn't fucking care either. So get the fuck over it. If you got to fucking cut your wrists because you're worried about what other people think, I'm going to tell you this. Don't cross the road. Walk down the middle of the fucking street. (laughs) Exactly. I found out uh, around 11th grade, though, acting completely insane gets everyone off your back. Because, um... The, I was uh, I was doing this public access show and um, and the guy I was doing it with uh, was getting on this ki- this other kid's case and you know guilty by association um, you know the guy I did it with got got expelled so like they went after me so this guy shows up with like six guys and he like pushes me and he's like dude you you were making fun of my brother 
And I just start yelling. I'm like, what are all you going to do to me? Do you think you could do anything to me? And I just start screaming and I called them all out. And, uh, and they kind of just walked away. They they thought it was so crazy that I would like try and fight seven of them that they walked away and never messed with me again. So uh, if you're getting fucked with because uh, any reason, you know, you're gay or something, just act completely insane. That's my advice. Uh, I think that'll work more often than it doesn't. Uh, are you still there, John? I am think? here. Can you give me one second? Yeah, sure. Sure. All right. Give me one second. So, uh, brinkofsanityshow.com is the website. Join the forums. Uh, we got some good people on there, some stuff going on, but I'd like a little more chatter going on. Make me happy. And give us an iTunes review. I think that we are actually very close to getting featured on iTunes. Been doing a little, uh, stalking on the comedy section, and, uh, people around 48, 50 reviews, um, are featured, and we're up to 44. So, um, I think I think we're right there. So a couple more reviews and we should be in. And uh, you know what? We could probably start giving reviews to uh, the New York Knicks podcast as well um, because that hasn't been around long. So if we get some buzz, maybe that'll get featured, and then I will just keep promoting Brink of Sanity on that show. And then, uh, you know, yeah. So uh, we are going to – oh, uh, you could also leave a voicemail, 631-676-1181. And you could email me at thebrinkofsanity at gmail.com. Uh, I think that is everything that I need to plug for the show. So uh, oh, did Perfect. I'm yeah. back. I, I, I have to admit this to everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, while we were discussing uh, our outrage – uh, at what teens were like back in the day compared to uh, the fact that it's pretty much pussy anymore and you shouldn't be killing yourself over it. Uh, I was trying, because I had to pee really bad, uh, pee into a can, and uh, it, it didn't work. This just happened just now? Yeah, when I when I was talking to you and everything. Oh I'm, like, I'm, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and try and pee into this can because, I, you know, it's radio. I'm like, well, fuck it. You know what? I'm a, I'm a consummate professional. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and keep this going because we got a we got a good thing going. We're talking about you know something that's close to home and everything. We're gonna roll with this, dude. You could have said, "Give me thirty me. seconds." <laughs> so, so yeah. Well, at the time before the thirty seconds, no, 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 no. I told you to give me thirty seconds after I tried to pee in the can, and uh, because I, I I had a little bit of a gut. Um, I was having trouble knowing if my dick hole was centered over the can hole. And when I did start to pee, I saw it come down the sides of the can a little bit. And uh, because of my setup out here in the mud room, which actually has a drain, which I was going to originally try and pee in, because <laughs> there's a washing machine <laughs> and shit out here. I love it. Um, I and love a door, it. a door off to my right. I, you know, I could have stepped outside. Uh, I tried the can. I thought, well, I'll keep this going and I'll, I'll piss in the can. Uh, surely I'm not going to pee more than 12 ounces. Um, didn't happen. <laughs> So I had to I had to break away. Sorry about that. I, it was I, more I, than twelve I ounces. Like amateur. I feel like an amateur. This is why I drink hard liquor, folks. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, because that that doesn't beer. Uh, the, the, it is. It's an old saying, but it's a true saying. You just you rent the beer. Yeah, yeah. Hard liquor. You know. Get really drunk, pee once or twice. You are good. Yes. Although you got to learn how to I pace just, yourself. I'm, I have a couple friends who uh, are trying to like, well, I'm starting to get a beer belly. Let's switch to hard liquor. But then they have no idea how to, how to correlate that because, you know, they could drink 10, 12 beers. They think, well, you know, I'll have 10, 12 mixed drinks. But then they, they make the mixed drink with like a double or triple shot, you know, and then it goes horribly wrong. Oh, see, I've always remembered health class. One shot is equivalent to one beer, so I've right. always. But and some I people mix, don't. I, I can't. I don't drink it straight. Well, I, some I people do, don't do. measure their mixed drink with a shot glass. They just pour until they think there's enough in the glass. And if you do that, you're always pouring two or three shots worth. The shot's not just, as much as it looks like. Just an update on the urine situation. Um, the <laughs> overspill that I had on the tile floor out here. It's not carpet. It's tile. I love the place we moved into. It's I have two dogs. It's all wood floors, all tile. Uh, the tile um, had a little bit of overrun from the can, mm-hmm. and uh, I just took off one of my socks. Oh soak my it up. 
So there you go. <laughs> Old Milwaukee right, well. beer, folks. America's best tasting beer. It's on the can. Uh, and that's that's what I'm pounding. And 10 or 12 beers. Fuck, dude. I've, I'm, on, uh, I'm probably on 14 right now, and I have the rest of the night and work tomorrow. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is why I love you. <laughs> it's not like it's Sunday. Uh, <laughs> And, and plus, like I said, work is very stressful for me. And this, I'm so glad you had me on the show tonight. I do want to thank you, Jason, because um, I really need the, needed this, especially after just all the bullshit that went on today in my life to, to, to cut through. So thanks thanks for having me on the show. It was beautiful. Is there something you want to get off your chest or is that? Um... I don't know. I, I'm, I'm almost afraid. I worked, uh, I work on, for seven years, I've worked uh, for a family uh, on a farm, um, on a family owned farm. And, uh, it would take me weeks to give you the backstory on everything. But, uh, uh, let's just say that, uh, after a bunch of horrible mishaps, um, um, societal wise, family wise, um, the, the Patriot, the, the, uh, the old man died there, there. And uh, it, we were left with uh, with the missus in charge. And, of course, she didn't feel equipped to take care of it. So she, what she did was she brought in, um, in our area, what is the equivalent of taking a farm and turning it into a corporation. All right. um, it's very hard to explain. Yeah. Uh, I guess if I'm you're lost. a farmer, mm-hmm. and I, I know out there, out east, well, you've got farmers, upstate New York and everything. You've got some rural areas and everything. Long Island was um, almost that's... totally a farm when my family moved out there, and now it's like hardly at all. But, uh, yeah, it used, to, used to be very farmy. It's it's it, Farming is actually uh, – I grew up in – I mean, I grew up in Illinois, central Illinois, uh, rural area all around. I grew, I've grew. i grown up in fields all my life, and I used to think this is hickey, this is bullshit. I'm a corn chip. And all that shit, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, no, it's it's. I think it's actually now a, a noble profession. You're your own fucking boss, and you are in control of your own destiny as a farmer. Uh, but what happened was uh, now that has been brought in that is a corporation that deals with people that don't feel that they can handle that responsibility. And what they do is they turn something that's noble and uh, your own boss type of thing into a, uh, a corporation. And mm-hmm. it's just it's just been I, I've had a lot of freedom over the last seven years, um, even though it's been hard work, even though it's outdoor work every day, you know, whether it's 30 below zero or 108 degrees and and, and all that shit into something where it's. You're drug tested, and you have this amount of time to do things. Then they they've turned it into a fucking office job, and uh, it's it's really started to wear on me because it became it, it became a big issue uh, today, where uh, there was an ex- a huge huge blow up over working on holidays. Jason, you said you have a job that you had a party for. Do you get the major holidays off? Yeah, I think we get like. Six. There's six holidays we get off for. All right. Let's say Christmas time. Do you get Christmas Eve off? Um, I think we just get Christmas Day off, but they usually let us go a couple hours early. Uh, okay. Christmas well, Eve. this this year, Christmas Eve or Christmas Day is on a Saturday. Uh, and we actually sat down. I like to call it. By the way, I like to call these people. And for those of you that have seen Office Space, you'll appreciate this. The people that I deal with now. As we make this acclamation, I call them the Bobs because that's what they are. We've got the Bobs coming in, wanting to make changes. Uh, I, we sat down with the Bobs and we were hashing out what everybody does uh, for their holidays, um, and it all worked out actually in our favor. They're like, "Well, yeah, you know, uh, Christmas falls on a Saturday. You guys ought to get a day off during the actual work week for that and everything." And uh, mm-hmm. Uh, needless to say, I can't. I just I hate to bring up a, a, a bunch of names and a bunch of examples, just because um, you know you hear so many horror stories about people going on Facebook and posting shit and getting fired and everything. Um, but but it turned into uh, the, the the very person that hired these people to come in and make these decisions didn't like the decision and exploded. Uh, <laughs> and it's it just today was a, a complete stressed out mess. 
uh, over, uh, you know, just a couple of years of stressed out mess. I wish I could go into more, but I need to go into more backstory. We need to have uh, you and I a show where I go in and tell this entire backstory because uh, the thing that I like about this and the reason I can, I can bring all this up on here mm-hmm. is uh, nobody that uh, I work with knows to listen to this. Right, exactly, exactly. They can't get back to anyone. But there's, there's all, all kinds of fucking backstory behind this. We're talking about uh, some Peyton Place shit. I mean, we're talking about uh, at the time that, you know, my boss was alive with his wife. He fucking cheated on her with the foreman's wife and all kinds of just crazy ass insane bullshit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that went on and i would love to just throw all that out but uh instead i just went off on this fucking boring ass drunken ramble that makes no sense to anybody but myself uh, <laughs> about this and I, I appreciate you letting me do that jason thank you Got yeah no I was, I was waiting for uh i don't know did i mention i'm actually standing on my my socks right now soaking up the urine still <laughs> both now I, I thought you had a free one eh, i took the other one off too why you know why make one feel left out all right. I thought it would just, you know, in case you have a second when you, when mishap. You when you're blotting up a spot, you have to put pressure on it, right, to wick it up through whatever fucking fiber you're pressing down on it. I don't want actual urine wicking up into my foot, so I've got a dry sock on top of the one that's going to pull all the urine up, but not quite enough urine to get to the top of the second sock, and I'm pressing down on that to let it let it pull. It's called cleaning. Yeah, yeah. It's cleaning and keeping the bottom of my foot urine free, which maybe I shouldn't. I have a touch of the athlete's foot, and I've always heard piss on your feet. Uh, that gets rid of the athlete's foot. I have not heard that, but. Um, Ever? Really? Yeah. I, that's kind of like the. Like, it's you either, if you've got an athlete's foot or if you're bit by a jellyfish, piss on it. Huh. Okay. Well, you know, I'll keep that in mind. I'll store that in the databanks. Uh, oh, we never listened to the uh, the PSA, the awesome PSA for uh, I think before you speak. Because yes, you've been teasing me with this all night. They have solved uh, the problem of people gay bashing by making these PSAs. It's um, you watch this and you feel guilty, and you say, "I'm never using the word gay again." So, uh, so let's hear this because I, I want to help. I want to help this problem. So. We'll listen to this, and then nobody will use the word again. Hey, 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 check out this chef, right? <laughs> right? That's so gay. That's really gay. Dude, look at those pants. Please don't say that. What? Don't say that something is gay when you mean that something is dumb or stupid. It's insulting. <laughs> it's like if I thought this pepper shaker was stupid, and I said, man, and this pepper shaker is so 16-year-old boy with a cheesy mustache. Just saying. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. All right. Problem Cat solved. Williams did that. <laughs> that was Wanda Sykes giving it no, to them. Oh, fix the two of them up, man. Giving it to them. There's more. <laughs> There's more. Not by Wanda Sykes. How is it? How is it? I'm sorry, and and this is probably the most fucking racist thing I'll do ever say. Like but isn't it not ironic that you have black people standing up for homosexuals in a PSA? A little bit. A little bit. I, I think so. I'm not making that up. You you all read the demographics. I'm not a dick. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> a spade's a spade. Oh, I don't mean it that way either. Their point is all wrong, though, the way they're doing it. It is. Because they're they're saying don't say a generalization – what if I gave a really specific description that applies to, like, you and two other people? They're like, don't say the word gay because that hurts gays. What if I said uh, John from Random Ass Radio sucks? You know, it's, it's kind of different uh, situation they're trying to, to mingle here. What if I was Wanda Sykes and I called up Will Smith on the telephone to congratulate him? about uh, his recent success in whatever endeavor he had just participated in. And I called him up as Wanda Sykes, and I'm like, Will Smith, Nick, that was beautiful. What you did was beautiful, Nick, okay? 
I like I the uh, the either. live yeah. censoring of yourself. That that was good. You like that? That yeah. was my own little beat. Um, <laughs> but that's what they're saying. Oh, because I've prefaced that before. I have sat there and said something was gay, and then got a look from someone in the room who's gay, and looked at them and said, "No, not like it's homosexual. Like I'm still in third grade." And they get it. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> they do get it. Like when you're in third grade. When you were in third grade, you didn't know what fucking gay was. The only thing you knew about gay was you called something gay because it was, oh, that's fucking gay. It was just, it was weird. It was different. It was out there. You know, homosexuals don't care about that. And the ones who do, they're dicks anyway. All right? Fuck them. Wait, they didn't kill themselves? They should. Like Hmm. I said, walk down the middle of the road. Don't cross the street. You want to hear another one? Because they're really good. Get your Oh, yeah, yeah, throw them out, throw them out. Because that kills me, because how is that any different? How can Wanda sit there and say, don't make, like, sit, no, don't say nothing about not being stupid and calling it gay, when you will sit there? And I know she'll sit there, and she uses the N-word when she's talking to other folks uh, who are the same tint as her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're being so much... Uh, more behaved on my show than you are on your show. <laughs> well, that, it's your show. I can't. I can't sit and talk like that. <laughs> Wait, let's. I don't even know which celebrity this is. Let's see. So, are you going out to me? I can't. My parents say I have to be home right after work. <sighs> That's so gay. Totally gay. Oh, that is so Emma and Julia. See oh, again. That's so Emma and Julia. <laughs> Well, you know, I, love that. I, I swear to God, I didn't even watch this one, and that's like the exact example I just gave. Oh, and then Julia. Who says that? Everyone. Imagine if who you are were used as an insult. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. And don't, you know what? Don't fucking yell at me to knock it off. Fuck you. <laughs> Do you realize how sanctimonious and full of bullshit you come across when you go, knock it off? <laughs> exactly. I this because I got fucking busted because I was really coked up and driving drunk. Fuck you. <laughs> God, I hate that shit. I really do. I hate I hate the thought police. And I used to actually, as a younger man, sit and be like, oh, there's never going to be the thought police. But, oh, my God, guess what? I got older, and it really did happen. There's fucking thought police now. Should I buy the URL speak before you think? <laughs> Maybe. And they're just Maybe. Uh, just we could make we could make PSAs oh, no. and just call everyone gay. Yeah, don't don't buy the the don't buy speak before you think because it's so gay. <laughs> it's so fucking gay. Oh my god, since we watched the first video, uh Dyke has been used on Twitter another 83 times. <laughs> I love Dyke. And where did Dyke come from? And then they even spelled it different. Like, they had to differentiate. Like, no, not like something to hold water back. Something that eats pussy. That's got <laughs> pussy itself. And it's Dyke with a Y. Well, it's y the same thing with fag. Pussy. They're like, no, not a European cigarette. Yes. No. My, my favorite was always queer. Gay. No, not happy. Yeah, queer, not weird. There's no, like, original uh, gay slurs. Kind of um, one I like from from like the uh, 20s and 30s, which I always thought I should have lived during that time because I'm a big fan of dysentery and cholera. Um, a wee bit lavender. Somebody who is gay. They're they're a wee bit lavender. <laughs> so also purple one, was always a gay one color. Used, huh? One that's used quite a bit uh, around my my area. Peter Puffer. Peter <laughs> I haven't heard that one. The alliteration. The alliteration. It's poetic. Peter Puffer. It's 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 alliterate. It, uh, There's one it's, more. It's, it's I, I bet this is. I bet this is brilliant. There's one more. Do you like this top? It's so gay. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's totally gay. All right. First of all, is that the way two hot girls talk? I don't think so. I think that's the way two frat guys talk. I don't think I've ever heard a girl say that. You know, really? Because really I do know that. girls who said. Do you? Oh yeah, that talk like that. Yeah, fuck yes. Oh okay. Well, you do I live in the Midwest. Girls would talk that way just because they know it's offensive. Hmm. Gotcha. To people. Yeah. Say so what? Well, say that something's gay when you mean it's bad. It's insulting. 
What if every time something was bad, everybody said, oh, that silk girl wearing a skirt as a top? Oh, you are. <laughs> Those are cute jeans, though. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Thank you, Hillary Duff. Oh, hell no, was it? Yes, it was. I don't even know what Hillary Duff does, but apparently she does that. Really? Yeah. See, I, I'm sorry. I just, I can't, I really can't stand that. Because when there are PSAs like that, and people, here's what you need to understand. When there are PSAs like that, it's not because there was a bunch of homosexual use. It's, it's not for any other reason than it is our government and our media training us, trying to tell you this is the way that you need to talk. The way you talk is wrong. You need to speak in this certain way. And I know this is a comedy program, <laughs> and I know that we're all funny sometimes, drunk motherfuckers. I've, I'm sitting here soaking up piss with my socks, but I still have <laughs> enough presence of mind to know that that's fucking wrong. That once you start buying into that bullshit... The sock then, part or the, the gay part? Oh, no, you should always soak up piss with socks. They're okay. super absorbent. No, I'm talking about the gay part. The fucking gay part. You think... Uh, I'll tell you what. Um, maybe, maybe I would take uh, a little more credence uh, from those spots if I knew that the participants were doing them for free, mm -hmm. that everybody did it, that there was no money whatsoever that went into that. It was totally nonprofit. But guess what? It's not. There's money being made. Oh, lots of profit. Uh, and I'm totally against this. I'm totally against this statement. Uh, the whole, oh, I'm really getting tired of the whole Susan G. Komen cancer thing. Everything's fucking pink right now. But I do agree that it wouldn't be if there wasn't somebody making a profit. If you want to know why something's popular, if you want to know why it's bad to say gay or it's bad to say nigger or because breast cancer is real popular, look at the fucking money trail. Look at where it leads because guess what it leads to? It usually leads to the people uh, who are the worst about it. Mm -hmm. The worst purveyors of it. It's true. Um, the people who are making money off of the anti don't say gay campaign are probably gay folks. And they like if folks is okay. Yeah, I think I think folks is still good. Okay, because I brought this up about the N word. The people who make the most money by saying that the N word is bad and by propagating that 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 the N word is a horrible thing are people like Al Sharpton. Uh, people like Jesse Jackson, people who have built a career on talking about how oppressed we are, how that's a horrible word, and they make the profit off of that. Mm -hmm. Look, follow the fucking money trail, people. Follow the money trail. Uh, people who sit there and talk about soaking up urine with their socks, they don't make any money. No money. No money. And they're truth. They're, they're people who are telling you the truth. And I'm telling you right now, I really honestly have... Um, I'm a little little piece of sock between my foot. I know. <laughs> I'm not making anything off that. Jason, do I do you pay me? I do not pay you. Yeah. And nor do he you pay me when I'm on your show. <clears throat> so uh I think on that note, we're pretty much out of time. Yeah. We're gonna end it with pee on the sock. That's that's how we do here. So uh, thank you for coming on. Listen thank to Random you. Ass Radio. RandomAssRadio.com. Yes, yes. And we'll be on tomorrow night at uh, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time if you feel like uh, like calling in. Jay, we'd love to have you. I am going to be out of town, but I will be back next Friday for some uh, drunk phone calls. Every time I call, I crash your Skype, though, so I feel bad. Uh, I've got uh, I've gotten a t well two weeks before uh, two weeks before I moved I actually figured out what my problem was with most of that and I uh, I got it taken care of it was a RAM issue ah well there you go so now you'll hear more yeah. uh, Brink of Sanity crew on on Random Mass Radio so yeah, yeah tune in eight o'clock Central Standard Time until like three in the morning because your shows are just uh, long well maybe not so much for the next few weeks I have to work Saturdays. Um, another fun part of my, uh, 
in my real life, but uh, yeah, I don't really give a fuck. Yeah, the last forever. We used to do it on Wednesday, and I get fucked up to hell. So we used to do Wednesday too, and I was like, you know what? I don't want to be hung over every Thursday for the show. Oh, I know. That's why I changed mine, and now I got to do Saturdays. And I was like, well, I'll change it to Saturday while I do. And then I'm like, no, you know what? Fuck it. Saturday's a day to be hungover going into work. Yeah, you can like kind of plow through uh, Saturdays, but when you got to get through like Thursday and Friday, it, it's a lot tougher. Oh no, Thursdays killed me. We do some, when we first started doing the show, we did keep it in an hour, mm-hmm. and then uh, all of a sudden, my alcoholism really like was like. Whoa! What are you even trying for? Fuck it. Be you, John. <laughs> and, you can and do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Andy would be like, end the show. He'd be sending me texts. He'd be sending me Skype message. End it. And I'd be like, no, we got another good hour and a half, man. <laughs> We're on a roll. And, oh, yeah. And then I would get up like two hours later to go to work and be like, I hate my life. <laughs> yep. Been there many Many too many times. Yeah, anymore I just wear it like a badge. People can't even tell when I'm hungover. <laughs> if I came into work where I wasn't fucking feeling like shit and my eyes weren't glassy and fucking bloodshot, they'd be like, the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> All right, well, uh, thanks for coming on. And, um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll be keeping in touch more often now that you got your new setup and you're you're good to go. Yes, definitely, man. Thanks for having me. Cool, man. Well, uh, we'll talk soon. Um, BrinkofSanityShow.com is the website, and the New York Knicks podcast is the other website. And RandomAssRadio.com is where you find John. And uh, we both we both do shows. I usually do my show first on Fridays, and then uh, and then right when I'm about done, you start yours. So it's, uh, you know, if you want to listen to... Uh, chubby guys drunk talking for about seven hours straight your friday is all taken care of chubby chubby drunk guys yeah with pissy socks with pissy socks yeah Yeah. (laughs) all right goodbye everybody This is the end.